Praise the Lord. Greetings to you once again in the name of Yashwa the Messiah and uh, welcome you to this YouTube channel uh, for the first day of the week, Manna. Today we are going to see the second part of our message that we started last week. Uh, today's topic is first month, the former and the latter rain. That is the subject today we will have. Uh, it is mentioned in Joel chapter 2, 23 and also in uh, the book of James chapter 5, verse 7. Today we have the second part and uh, as you all know that uh, 14th March uh, is the beginning of the first month and uh, according to the biblical calendar or sacred calendar. So before we could uh, go for the word for the for today, we will uh, pray that God may give us wisdom and understanding to understand his word in the time that we are living in. So let's bow down our heads, close our eyes that we may pray that God may give us understanding. Father in heaven, God of Abraham, my second Jacob Almighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the God who inhabited in the praise of Israel, the same yesterday, today and forever, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. To thee be all glory, honor, praise and dominion, power, majesty and goodness. God Almighty, in this time we pray as we drink the word, Lord, we pray, give us understanding. Enlighten us, illuminate us, teach us, make us understand. Thy word, give us Father's revelation. Give us the wisdom of God and help us to rightly divide the word of truth. That your great name be exalted. The more we hear, Lord, we may decrease and thou may increase in our life. By all parts of darkness, none of those seem force may have power. Lord. And Lord, enlighten us through the power of the Holy Ghost, through our Hodesh, that we may be able to understand the word. We commit everything to the hand, for we ask all these things in the blessed, sweet, holy, excellent name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So, once again, uh, uh, wish you all a happy new year as we start this uh, year and we pray that God may enlighten us and illuminate us. Uh, this is what the biblical calendar is. And we already sent you all the calendars, you can go through it and uh, keep praying and asking God forgiveness and uh, making a Teshwa prayer all the days so that God may be able to do wonders and miracles in this time of pestilence and as we come closer to the time of His coming and uh, also we are entering into the year of 2021. Uh, we need to pray that we may know God's plan and purpose in our life and all that we need to do further. So today, uh, the first month uh, message, the topic is first month, the former and the latter rain, Joel chapter 2, 23 and James chapter 5, verse 7, the second part. We'll have uh, six uh, subjects in this. First is the heaven shut and the reasons for it. Second, we'll see how to open the heaven. Third, we'll see the presence of God, which we see seven times in the Bible. Uh, fourth, we'll see about the former and the latter rain. And the fifth, uh, we'll see about the gift of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And the sixth subject, we'll see about speaking in tongues. What is it exactly in the scriptures? So all these six subjects we'll see today. We will start with the first subject that is uh, heaven shut and the reason. What it speaks we will see from the scriptures so that you may be able to understand uh, about it. So the topic that we mentioned that is Joel chapter 2, 23. Uh, I will read the scripture. It says, Be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain 
the former and the latter rain in the first month. Now the word here, first month, uh, the original uh, in the Hebrew it is only mentioned is uh, only first. The month that you see in English it is italics. Italics means uh, it has been added to make it uh, uh, sense, to give sense to it. That's why the word month is added. Though we know that the first uh, rain, it is always in the first month. So that's why we have uh, put this scripture here, that is the topic. So the former rain and the latter rain, and the latter rain in the first means it is the first month. And uh, we'll see some scriptures later. So all these uh, small topics that we are seeing today, it is all related uh, to this subject about the former and the latter rain. So the first uh, subject is the heaven shut uh, and the reasons for it. The heaven shut and the reasons for it. In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, uh, verse 16 and 17, this is what God spoke to Moses. And it says, uh, take heed to yourself that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain and that the land yield not a fruit and lest you perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth thee. This is what God spoke to Moses in the Torah, the first, the fifth book, the book of Deuteronomy. There God says, if you turn aside and then serve other gods and worship, then the Lord said, uh, his wrath will be kindled against you. He spoke to the Israelites and said, he will shut up the heaven and there will be no rain. Now, one of the important things for us is the rain and if it is not there, we may not get the crop, uh, we may not get the food, everything will be a problem. That's why uh, the blessings has to come from heaven and it has been always like that. That's why God spoke to the Israelites and he said if we shut up the heaven then he will uh, also, he says uh, you will perish quickly from all the land which the Lord giveth thee. So it is a chain of problems that you see there. So here you see the first scripture there. The second scripture again we see in 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 uh, verse 13. Here it's again mentioned that if I shut the heaven then there will be no rain. This is the second time that you see it is mentioned that if I shut up heaven and there will be no rain. This is what you read in the book of uh, Chronicles. Again in the third scripture is uh, in 2nd Chronicles 6.26. Here you see the reason is mentioned. Now this is the third prayer of King Solomon when he built, it, uh, built up the temple. He makes a prayer out of the seven prayers. This is the third prayer that he makes. In the third prayer, he says when the heaven is shut up. So he says if the heaven is shut up and the people come to the temple to pray. Uh, why the heaven is shut up, he says, and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. This is 2 Chronicles 6.26 says, because they have sinned against thee. So, uh, the rain is, uh, the heaven is shut up because of our sins and iniquities. That is the reason why. Now spiritually, this rain also speaks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit or the work of the Holy Spirit. Now it is stopped because uh, of our sins and iniquities. Uh, this is the third scripture that we have seen. Uh, fourth scripture we see in uh, <clears throat> Second Samuel 21 verse 1 says, Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house. Because they shed a lot of blood because he slew the Gibbonites. The Gibbonites were killed, that's why God was angry and that's why God brought famine for three years. 
but god said specifically it was for saul and uh, for his uh, bloody house so therefore many a times uh, rain doesn't come it is because of our sins and iniquities and uh, when lot of blood is shed then you see all these uh, problems coming that's why we saw the scriptures here then again in the another scripture in the new testament book of james chapter 5 17 says uh elijah was a man subject like unto passions and as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of 3 years and 6 month so there was no rain for 3 and 1/2 years because the king that was ruling the known time was ahab and his wife was jezebel now they did lot of evil things they sold themselves and they were the one who killed naboth now all these things because of that you see that there was no rain for 3 and 1/2 years now this what you read here that will again be repeated in the end time uh, you see that this will again come back and uh, we are very close to that now another scripture in jeremiah chapter 5 25 for that you need to read 24 also that you may able to understand uh, this verse uh, 25 jeremiah 5 25 says your iniquities have turned away these things that is the rain is not there the former and the latter rain and it says your sins have withheld good things from you again in jeremiah chapter 3 verse 3 again uh, prophet jeremiah writes he says therefore the showers have been withheld and there has been no latter rain no latter rain and thou had a worse for it thou refuses to be ashamed why worse for it israel became a bore because she left the true and the living god and started worshiping wood stone and all those thing that's why god said she is a war and uh, that's why there is no rain the rain has been stopped and all this uh, problem comes because of the sins and iniquities so i have shown you why the heaven is shut i showed you the reasons in the bible uh, the heaven is shut even today the ministry of the holy spirit is not being seen as Uh, it should be that's why we need to pray for it now this is the first thing that i showed you the heaven is shut and i have showed you the reasons now we go to the second subject is how to open the heaven the heaven is shut how to open it for that there are seven things that we need to do what are these seven things now you understand it very carefully the first thing in deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 13 says If you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments which I command you this day, so today if we need to have the Holy Spirit ministry, what we saw on the day of Pentecost, if that has to be repeated back, then the first thing God says, hearken diligently unto my commandments. So the commandments that you gave on the day of Pentecost, we all need to return back. Today, whatever church you may be. we need to return back to the apostolic teachings so that we may able to get the rain back as it was in the day of pentecost so the first thing is hearken diligently the second thing deuteronomy chapter 11 13 says to love the lord we need to love him with all your heart that is the second thing god wants to see from us first we need to hearken diligently unto his commandment second thing to love the lord third thing again deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 13 to and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul not part of your heart and part of your soul but with all your heart you need to serve him you do you need to do a service unto him this is the third thing that he said you got to serve him uh, all the days of your life not for sometimes uh, we should uh, be doing a good service unto the lord for all the good thing that he has done in our life so this is the third thing uh, that we must remember 
in order to open the heaven that God may be able to bless us uh, with the showers of blessing. The fourth thing in 2 Chronicles 7 14, when we read it, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. So, this is the prayer that is God is looking. Humble prayer. If we humble and pray, then God will surely hear us. We should humble uh, and pray before God. You know, many a times you see in the Bible a lot of servants of God, kings, they all humbled and prayed. And that's why we need to humble and pray. Now, this is what Elijah the servant did it. In James chapter 5 18, here it says, And Elijah prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit, because he prayed unto God sincerely, obediently, uh, because Elijah was the prophet of God, and uh, he prayed, and God restored back the rain that was not there for three and a half years. So, this is the fourth thing that we need to do humble and pray. The fifth thing, 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, Seek my face. Now we need to seek him. When you are reading, taking time to pray, taking time to read this word, taking time to understand what he has written, then you are seeking him. You are trying to seek him to know all that God has written. Because there are many things uh, that he wrote. Uh, in order to understand it, you need to spend time in studying the word. So you are seeking his face. That is the fifth thing God is looking. The sixth thing, again in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, Turn from their wicked ways. Now whatever wicked ways are still there, we need to get rid of it. That is the thing that God is looking. Now that can only come in when you read the word, because the word will convict you, convince you and convert you. So you need to read the word, to understand what is right and just what we need to follow and before reading you ask God you pray so that God may give you father's revelation he may give you the wisdom of God and you may be able to rightly divide the word of truth now these are the three important things that you need to do that now that's why through that all the wicked ways that in us that will keep going away because we have so many uh, natures of Adam in us now that has to be die. Uh, all these natures, when it die, then you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. So this is what he is looking for, that we must turn away from all the wicked ways. And the seventh thing, in 2 Chronicles 6.26 says, you must cons confess uh, God's name. You must confess him. Confess his name because his name is above every name. And that's why we need to confess his name. These are the seven things when we do that, then God will surely one day open the heaven and give us the rain that you are looking for. This is the thing how we need to open the heaven which is shut now. It is because of our sins and iniquities. As I read in the book of Jeremiah, we saw already, Jeremiah 525 says, your iniquities and your sins are withheld all these good things from you, that is this rain. Now we come to the third subject, the presence of God or the glory of God. Uh, there are seven times, already five times, this glory has come upon the church or upon uh, the people. Uh, two times are still to be done. So we'll see all the scriptures. Uh, the presence of God or the glory of the Lord filled. Uh, how it was filled, we'll see some scriptures. First thing we see Exodus chapter 40, uh, when we read verse 35, it says that Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode. Now that word abode, as I said earlier, it is uh, shakan or shikana. Shikana means to dwell, settle down, inhabit or the presence of God. So the shikana glory, that is the presence of God. So here it says the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the Lord fill the tabernacle. So this is the first time you see the presence of God in the tabernacle, in the temp, uh, tabernacle that God has told Moses to build it. Now God gave all the measurements, 
all the pattern God gave and uh, since it was done according to his uh, pattern you see the glory came if glory has to come then we need to follow that God's pattern that's why the tabernacle the glory came because Moses uh, saw that everything was done as God commanded that's why you read Exodus chapter 39 40 18 times it is mentioned there that Moses did everything as the Lord commanded now 18 times it is being repeated to make you realize that you and me need to do what God has commanded in the New Testament when the church was established then God will surely bring that rain so in the tabernacle the glory came this is the first uh, time that you see the glory of the Lord the presence of God came uh, in the tabernacle now there also we see that it was in the first year first month first day it was set up second year first month uh, first day you read in Exodus chapter 40 you will see the scripture and then when it was raised up or reared up the glory of the Lord came upon the tabernacle this is the first time that you see the presence of God or the glory of the Lord second time uh, in 2nd Chronicles 7 1 when Solomon built the temple and uh, when he built it it took him 7 years and it took uh, 1,53,600 people to build it now when it was built here in 2nd Chronicles 7 1 says now when Solomon had made an end of praying the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house this is the second time you see the temple was also filled with the glory of God or the presence of God second time because even Solomon also did according to the pattern of the Lord he also did as Lord commanded never deviated or did any distortion but did everything as the Lord commanded that's why second time the glory of the Lord came third time in the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 and 9 says and I will fill this house with glory say the Lord of hosts the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former say the Lord of hosts now this is this temple is regarding the rebuilt temple that is after captivity of 70 years when the Israelites came out of captivity then King Cyrus gave them an order a proclamation to build a temple and that time again the temple which was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar they uh, rebuilt it and then God said I will fill this house with glory save the Lord of all that is the same glory that you saw in tabernacle and the temple that will again return back to this rebuilt temple and he says the glory of the latter house that is uh, the Solomon's house Solomon built the temple the glory will be more than that because that was the former house and this is the latter house so therefore the rebuilt temple will have the same glory uh, in fact more than the first time that's what God says here this is the third time you see that the glory of the Lord came uh, or the presence of God came upon the temple fourth time we come to the New Testament in John chapter 114 when Messiah was on the earth the scripture says uh, John 114 says and the word was made flesh that is God became man word was made flesh means God became man that is Yeshua HaMashiach and dwelt dwelt word in Greek it is called uh, it is called tabernacle or uh, uh, Sikno. Sikno means tabernacle. He dwelt means he tabernacle among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. <clears throat> so here, the fourth time we see the glory came. First time in the tabernacle, second time in the temple, third time in the rebuilt temple, and fourth time the glory was upon our Lord and Savior Yeshua he was because he tabernacled among us he came on this earth he was God he became flesh to die for our sin for our sickness for our death 
and to remove all this curse he came on this earth and he was also filled with the glory of god this is the fourth time that we see so we will see the fifth time the glory of the lord or the presence of god was in, on the day of pentecost so in acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 when you read it especially verse 4 says and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance now here there was no interpretation of the tongues because everybody understood in their own language now this was the time of pentecost again the glory of the lord came or the presence of god came upon the people on the day of pentecost so this is the fifth time that you see the glory of the lord or the presence of god is upon the people now sixth time uh, the scriptures are now that has not happened but we, it will surely happen when we read acts chapter 2 verse 17 and 18 and hebrew chapter 10 verse 35 to 37 this is about the end time church uh, we can go through it clearly in acts chapter 2 17 18 it says and it shall come to pass in the last days now when you read Joel chapter 2 uh, 28 there it was said afterward now that word afterward has happened on the day of Pentecost now when it came to Pentecost again the Holy Spirit has written in the last days so change the word in the last days that's why you will see in Acts chapter 2 17 18 says it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaid, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Uh, connected to that scripture is also Hebrew chapter 10 35 37 says cast not away therefore your confidence which has got great recompense of reward for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God you got to do the will of God you might receive the promise that is the promise that he gave on the day of Pentecost the promise of the Heavenly Father which is the Holy Ghost. So that promise, he said, you might receive the promise for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. So this is the ministry of the Ruach Hodesh. This has not happened, but in the end time church, in these last days, I believe God will do it as he did it on the day of Pentecost. So this has not happened. Uh, it will surely happen. Therefore, we need to continuously pray, make a Teshua prayer unto God, repentance prayer every day, asking God to restore back the years that has been eaten by locusts and to open the heaven that has been shut because of our sins and iniquities and all the wrong things that we have been believing. We need to get rid of those things, then God will surely bring that uh, presence of God or the glory of the Lord that came in the past so five times that we have seen it came so surely it will come in the sixth time upon the end time church and the seventh time again Haggai 2 9 it says it will be there in the latter house now latter house also you can take it as the third temple which the Jewish people will build it in the days to come so there also there will be a latter rain in those time also in the latter house so Jewish people will build the third temple so therefore uh, these are two things that are remaining I showed you five times the presence of God was seen uh, two times we are yet to see uh, we shall surely see it especially for the church because we may not be there in the time of the third temple when the Jewish people will build it because if he is going to come then he is coming to take the church 
which he has uh, filled with the presence of God, then he will come to take it. So these are the two things that are remaining. But we need to surely pray for the church that we are in today. If you are in whatever teachings, we need to get back to the Pentecost teaching so that he may be able to bring back the same presence of God. He may be able to fill the church with the glory of God. That's where we need to pray for it. This is the third topic that I've showed you. The seven times the presence of God, five times it has happened, two times is yet to happen, uh, six times it will come upon the church. So we need to pray, keep praying so that God may do all that he has written in the scripture. The fourth topic is former and latter rain. Uh, we'll see about this former and latter rain. We'll see some few scriptures uh, about this. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14 says that I will give you the rain of your land in its due season. The first rain, that is the former rain, and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thy oil. So corn is the word of God, wine is the revelation of the word, oil is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So these three things spiritually God can give you. The first rain, that is the rain, the Holy Spirit baptism, which the Pentecost church received. And then the latter rain is pending. We need to pray for it. Jeremiah chapter 5, 24 says, Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God. We need to fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth, reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. So he uh, reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. So harvest time is also there. So we need to fear God who gives the rain. He gives the natural rain and he will also give us the spiritual rain as uh, it is important. Again in Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 to 3 when you read it, uh, you know there it is also about turning back to God because Bible says let us return unto God because uh, he has uh, uh, torn us and he only can heal us. He says after two days he will revive us and the third day we shall stand before him. Then he says in verse 3 then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and the former rain upon the earth. So there are two rains that you see constantly the word of God speaks. Then in Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 says, Ask ye, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. Now this is very important scripture for us. That's why we need to keep on asking God with the Teshua prayer that is repentance prayer asking the Lord for the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Grass is the people, field is the world. So we who are in the world, the church God, has, uh, God is building today, is bringing the people. So we need to ask God for the latter rain. Again in James chapter 5 verse 7, it says, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman, that is the farmer, waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. Precious fruit of the earth are the souls. Has long patience for it. We need to have long patience until he receives the early and the latter rain. So all the scriptures we have seen, it talks about the first rain or the latter rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. Now again in John chapter 7 verse 37 to 39 when Jesus Christ was attending the feast of the tabernacle which is the feast of Sukkot the feast that you see in the Bible one of the feasts is the feast of tabernacle or it's called the feast of Sukkot. Uh, during that uh, feast in John chapter 7 37 to 39 in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. 
He that believeth on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly, that is the heart, shall flow rivers of living water. This rivers of living water is the Holy Spirit because he says further, this spake ye of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. That means he never went to heaven uh, to make an atonement for the whole sins of the whole world. So he was not glorified. So here he spoke this and said about the Holy Spirit he was talking about. So all the scriptures we have seen about the rain, spiritually the former rain and the latter rain also speaks about the Holy Spirit baptism. Now the former rain occurs in autumn season that is October, November that is the month of bull, the eighth month. Now it is for sowing of the seed. This uh, season, this former rain is for, for sowing the seed. Then the latter rain occurs in spring season, that is in the month of March, April, that is the month of Nisan or Abib, the first month, now that is for the harvest. So before the harvest, there is a rain. So the harvest, the Bible speaks, uh, you read in Matthew chapter 13 says, harvest is the end of an age. So the Gentile age is going to come to a close. Before that, we need to pray and keep praying that God may bring a great revival because between this autumn season and the spring season, there is a gap of approximately six months. Now, spiritually, the former rain happened on the day of Pentecost. When the seed was sown, the troop was sown. On the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter laid down the pattern of the church. Paul laid down the form of doctrine and John the Apostle laid down the end time prophecies. So these three great servants of God, they laid down the seed uh, that you see in the church when it was established on the day of Pentecost. Now that seed was sown, the seed is the word of God, it was sown and now it is a time for the latter rain uh, upon the end time church because God is preparing the end time church for the harvest, that is end of an age. So the age of the Gentile is going to come to an end and that's why God says I will build the tabernacle of David which is fallen down and that is the tabernacle of the Messiah, that is the church of the living Christ in, in this end time and that's why spiritually this former reign was on the day of Pentecost and the later, latter reign uh, will come upon the church in this end time, that's why we need to pray. Uh, another uh, spiritual thing that I want to show you here is, first temple Solomon built, the rebuilt temple uh, was built uh, uh, later on by Zerubbabel. So the first temple was built by Solomon, the, uh, the second temple or the rebuilt temple was built by Zerubbabel. In the same way, the first church was established on the day of Pentecost. So the latter day church or the end time church which God is building today, we need to be part of it. That's why we need to pray now uh, for the latter rain. That's why I showed you the scripture Zechariah chapter 10 one says, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So we need to pray for the Holy Ghost ministry in these last days so that there may be a lot of signs and wonders and miracles so that the eyes of the people may be opened and people may know that what God spoke is the truth and uh, the end time people because today we uh, have so many deviations uh, whatever churches that you see whether it is Catholic, Protestant, Pentecostals uh, you see there are so many deviations from the world God is coming for a church that will be like the church which was on the day of Pentecost. Because after Pentecost, everything deviated from the truth. There are a lot of distortions and deviations. Everything that God spoke, spoke people have uh, uh, changed it. That's why uh, we need to come back to the apostolic church that God established on the day of Pentecost. So whatever teachings which are not right, we need to get it right so that the Holy Spirit ministry may be seen back 
in these last days. Now the fifth subject, the gift of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. These are two different things. The gift of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. First we will see about the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 2, 38 it says, uh, You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said repent. The first thing is repentance. That is Teshwa. We need to repent for our past sins and all the sins that we commit daily. Knowingly or unknowingly, we need to ask God forgiveness because we have a holy God. Therefore, we need to repent on a daily basis asking God because many a times, sometimes it is not physical sin, maybe in our thoughts, in our, uh, in our imaginations also there could be things which are not right. Therefore, we need to keep praying and asking God forgiveness. So this gift of the Holy Ghost, another scripture in Acts chapter 10, 45, they also say that they of the circumcision, that is the Jewish people, which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles, that is the house of Cornelius, also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's never said gifts, it said gift singular. So the gift of the Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost himself. Because Acts 2.39 says, For the promise is unto you, the promise is unto you, that is the Jews, and to your children, again Jews, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, that is again the Gentiles, now here very important, whom God shall call. So all are not called. When you preach only, you will know who are called and who are not called. If somebody believes and follows the word, then you know that he is called. If not, he is not called. But everything, everybody has to be preached the word. So this is about the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now regarding the gifts, that is plural, gifts. Gifts of the Holy Ghost in the Bible are, 21 gifts are there. Now in Ephesians 4, 11, there are 5 gifts mentioned. In 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10, there are 9 gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, there are 2 gifts. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 7 and 8, there are five gifts. So totally it is 21 gifts. However, yet God says, yet the best gift is not this 21 but it is charity. That is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So you may have 21 gifts but if you don't have charity that is love, it is of no use which is God's love, which is the agape love, the way God loved we need to love. So that's why that is the best gift is charity. Now, now these gifts are God gives the gift, not pastor or not anybody. It is God who gives the gift. Now we'll see some scriptures. In 1 Corinthians 12, 11 says, But all this worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing. The word dividing in Greek it is called uh, di he reho. Di he reho means to separate or to distribute uh, to every man severally as he will. So it is he who gives the uh, gifts, not uh, pastors or preachers or bishops or uh, deacons or anybody. It is God who gives according to his will. In uh, Hebrew chapter 2 verse 4 also says, God also bearing the witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, gifts, plural, gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So it is according to his will. Now many a times you see in the churches, a lot of time the pastors say you speak in tongue. If you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Ghost. So uh, sometimes people will come and uh, they will tell you personally to speak. Uh, now understand that it is a gift that God gives. Now there are 21 gifts. God can give any gifts to you. It is God who decides, not uh, the servant of God. Therefore in 1 Corinthians 12, 30 says, Have all the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. Everybody doesn't do 
it is God who gives according to his will. So keep this in mind, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, God gives the gift. So keep that in mind. Now, the sixth subject, speaking in tongues. Now, what you see in the church is not what is in the scripture. Now you see many churches, they make people to speak in tongues. Sometimes you see everybody speaking in tongues. Now, we need to understand from the scriptures. Now I'll show you from the scriptures uh, regarding this. In Acts chapter 2, 6 to 11, when 120 received the Holy Ghost, every man heard them speak in their own language. Now here, there was no need of interpretation because everybody heard them in their own language. Now there were a lot of people there, uh, they heard them in their own language, so there was no need of interpretations. Now in Acts chapter 8, 17, when the Samaritans received the Holy Ghost, they never spoke in tongues. Samaritans never spoke in tongues. But in Acts chapter 10, 44 to 47, the house of Cornelius, when they received the Holy Ghost, the Gentiles, they also spoke in tongues. Acts chapter 19, 6, the disciples of John the Baptist, they also spoke in tongues. In 1 Corinthians 14, 19, Paul says, he also spoke in tongues. But Paul brought a clarification because there were a lot of confusions there. That's when 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says, God is not the author of confusion. Now when we see and go to many churches, you'll see uh, everybody speaking in tongues, you feel it is like a confusion. Now that is not what God uh, has written in the scripture because God is not the author of confusion, but he is the author of peace. Now some few scriptures in 1 Corinthians 14, 22, it says, Wherefore tongue are for a sign, not to them that believe. So it is not for believers, but to them that believe not. That means it is for unbelievers to believe God. God has given this speaking in tongues as a sign. Keep that in mind. Further, in 1 Corinthians 14, 23 says, if therefore the whole church, that means everybody, come together into one place and all speak with tongues and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? See, it is written in the scripture, yet many pastors, many preachers are not able to see. They force people to speak in tongues. Now tongue is also one of the gift. Interpretation is also one of the gift. It is God who gives. So we must not force anybody to speak in tongues. And what you see here, it is all emotionally uh, pastors induced uh, tongues. It is not God's way. That's why we need to be very careful because the devil can take the whole scenario uh, into his hand. Therefore, we need to be very, very careful and check the word what the Bible says. Now in 1 Corinthians 14, 27, it is said, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, not the whole people, let it be by two or at the most by three and that by course, that means one after the other they must do it, not that everybody will speak uh, in tongues and uh, uh, it is a confusion there and let one interpret, because if there is no interpretation, how will people know that what is spoken, so somebody has to interpret, so if it is God given uh, tongue, then God will also make somebody to stand up and interpret what is being spoken. Otherwise, let him speak unto himself. You can speak at home. Uh, but in the church, this is the rule that Paul laid on because uh, in the Acts that you don't see all those problems, but uh, later on, you see that uh, it became a big problem. Uh, there were a lot of confusion. That's why Paul has set everything right and said this is the way it should be. Because a lot of people have been taught today that if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Now that is a wrong statement that many of the preachers make it. But it is a gift of God. God gives to anybody. Out of 21 gifts, God can give you any gift. Therefore, we must not force somebody to speak in tongues. Now it is God given gift. God can give any gift. Faith is also a gift. 
healing is also a gift miracle is also a gift speaking tongues is a gift interpretation of tongue is also a gift giving is also a gift so all these things are gift god gives he knows uh, whom to give what it is in god's hand it is uh, the authority of god not in the authority of any preachers so keep this in mind that's why we need to continuously pray today for the latter rain that god may bring that rain back in the church uh, before his coming so that's why we need to keep praying unto him uh, the prayer of uh, repentance all the time we need to ask god correct ourselves all the wrong teachings we need to get rid of it and come back to the word do all that which is right as i said about the teaching that peter gave on the day of pentecost you need to check back all the teaching that paul spoke we need to get back to that and all that john spoke regarding the prophecy of the end time all these things we need to get back and do all that which is right correct ourselves then surely one day god will give us the latter rain as he gave it on the day of pentecost so keep this in mind so this is uh, all about the first month the former rain uh, also and the latter rain now former rain as i said it is in the time of uh, october november but the latter rain is in the first month that's why i have written this uh, so that you may able to understand that uh, we need to keep praying unto god uh, because he is the same yesterday today and forever and he also said in the bible i am the god i change not so what he did 2000 years back he can able to do it even now but what all god is asking is that we to ask god forgiveness on a daily basis so that god will open the heaven and give us the rain forgive all our sins and give us the showers of blessing so god may bless you through this word and this is the second part that we have seen today next week we'll see again the third part about the feast we'll see it and uh, understand the word and keep praying and uh, go through all the scriptures so that you may able to understand it well and uh, keep praying we are also praying you also need to pray through this prayer god can open the heaven and as i said there are seven things that i showed you if you will keep that in mind and pray and god will one day surely open the heaven and give us the rain so that there will be signs wonders miracles that we saw in the bible times the shadows of peter heal the people anchor chief the apron of paul heal the people he sent the word and heal the people that may be seen back in this last days so we need to pray and ask god forgiveness on a daily basis so god may bless you and uh, as we are entering the new year of 2021 we need to pray unto god to know his will and desire and it is also year uh, which is called the shemitah year every seventh year is a shemitah year keep that is also in mind uh, it is mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 10 says Moses commanded them saying at the end of every seven years in the solemnity of the year of release in the feast of tabernacle so in the feast of tabernacle which is the feast of sukkot uh, you see that this seven year uh, cycle so in 2021 Uh, we are also in that shemitah year it is a year uh, year of release uh, so therefore you need to understand all this thing and we need to keep uh, in prayer and also uh, day by day you see that the pestilence is also increasing therefore we need to pray that god may let us know his plan and purpose in these last days so before we could wind up let's uh, bow down our heads and pray and uh, pray for all those who may be sick or in trials or temptations so whatever you need to pray for them so let's bow our heads and pray for all those who may be sick or may be worried father in heaven god of abraham isaac and jacob almighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace the true and the living god as we speak this word lord we pray give people understanding about the former and the latter rain 
And we pray God open the heaven and give us the rain that thou gave on the day of Pentecost that your great name be exalted Lord. In this time Lord I pray for all the brothers and sisters who may be sick in trials and temptations, worries, anxieties or whatever be the problem. God I pray in the name of Yeshua the Messiah heal them, send the word and heal them and forgive all the sins and shortcomings and failures and wrongs. Watch them cleanse them through the precious blood of Yeshua the Messiah. Make their life holy and clean, accept in thy sight as a living sacrifice. And use them for their glory and for their honor, Lord. Bless everybody, Lord. Have mercy upon each one of them. Thank you for the word that you give us. We give all glory to you. In Jesus Christ's loving name we ask. Amen. So thank you very much. Uh, God bless you. Till we meet again. God be with you. Once again, Happy New Year.